20, 30, 40, or even $100,000. These aren't random numbers. They're the amounts you could lose if you make one of the seven mistakes we're going to talk about today. We start with the expensive ones and finish with the truly catastrophic. We're at one of my most challenging projects on a slope. This is Sky Residence. And if you're planning to build on a slope, this video is just for you. Mistake number one is miscalculating the heights between the ground floor and the upper floors. Let me show you an example. Right now, I'm standing between floors, between the ground floor and the first floor. We always use the ground floor as the base. In this case, that's the garage. From the garage, the level is calculated both downwards to the road and upwards to the second floor. This pink string is stretched here so that we can measure the floor level of the second floor from it. So in the project, there is a difference between the ground floor and the second floor. That's 13 feet. To get those 13 feet, we had to do complex calculations starting from the road. If we had made a mistake in calculating the ground floor, we would have faced the following problems. Problem number one, the ground floor. It's the most important one. Everything is calculated from it. The elevation of this floor actually starts from the road. That is, we have a pin driven into the road. In other words, this is a city road. The survey company drove in a pin for us and provided the elevation level of that pin. To get a comfortable driveway, we needed to determine the zero level and the calculation was done starting from the road. Because if we had set the zero level too high, there would have been a very, very steep driveway slope from the road. If we had lowered the level to make the first driveway more gentle, we would have ended up with the second driveway, which leads to the second floor, right where the bobcat is parked, being very, very steep with a sharp angle. That would have made it uncomfortable to drive up to the second floor level. That's why calculating the zero level is a very important reference point. As a rule, architects handle this when we receive the survey. With the survey, we can lay out all the slopes completely. On a slope, this is shown by the topographical survey. The lines indicate what elevation you have at each point. And when you build and determine the zero level, it's called the first floor elevation. You check how it connects to the road and to other elevations. For example, you might have a very steep slope behind your house. You need to see how much that slope can affect the first floor level. If you make a mistake calculating the zero point, everything else can go off track and fixing or correcting those errors could cost 20, 30, or even more thousand dollars. For example, if you're calculating the steps between floors, there are codes. According to the codes, you must keep the step height at seven and a half inches. And for instance, you want to calculate the steps between floors. Let's say there will be 10 steps in one flight and nine steps in the second flight. But between your first and second floor, you have 13. If you count the number of steps and multiply by seven and a half, it might turn out that you get 19 and a half steps, not 19 as I said before. And that's exactly because you made a mistake in the measurement between the first and second floor. Or for example, you're making a path to your house from the main road and you're thinking about how to set the steps for this path. And it turns out that each step can end up being either too high or too low. All of this needs to be calculated at the design stage. When you get to the construction stage, this point of determining the zero level is the most important and it can cost thousands of dollars. Building a house? Sign up for a consulting meeting. Mistake number two is water drainage. Behind me, there's a rather steep slope. And imagine, all the water from this slope will flow down to our foundation. Accordingly, you, we need to protect this foundation from water and redirect it. To do this, you need to create a plan. A civil engineer whom you consult will make a plan for you. Where and how the drainage pipes should be installed, where the water will be directed, what volume of water will reach your foundation, and accordingly, what size of drains and other special structures you need to build so that water does not flood your foundation in the future. On a slope, this is a very important element, which could end up costing you 30, 40, or even $50,000 in the future. Not long ago, there was a flood in Texas and a lot of homes were damaged. We also had several problems because water was flooding in from the neighbor's lot. The neighbor didn't have any drainage installed and all the water was coming to us. And one of our pipes couldn't handle such a large volume of water and wasn't able to let it through. As a result, some of the water ended up getting into the house. Of course, we fixed this problem later on. The very next day, we worked on creating an additional channel to divert the water. It happens. We found the issue, admitted our mistake and fixed it. But you need to plan for this at the construction stage. There will be a retaining wall here. On this wall, we'll install a special waterproofing layer. Then we'll add a membrane, which needs to be installed in the correct order. After that, we'll have a layer of gravel wrapped in fabric so that the gravel acts as drainage, like a filter. And of course, at the bottom, we'll lay a French drain to divert water away from the wall. Moreover, we'll do this at several levels. There will be one at the lowest level, probably where the soil meets the wall, and maybe higher up, we'll add another drainage channel to carry the water away. Also, every gutter, every downspout coming from the gutters 
we will direct into a special drainage system. Because if the downspouts just pour water onto the ground, the soil settles, water gets under the foundation and erodes it. Mistake number three, this is the protection of your foundation and retaining walls with waterproof material. If you don't protect your wall and foundation with special materials, water will seep through the ground, possibly even through the drainage you installed and reach the foundation, which could lead to cracks. Through these cracks, water can even get inside the house if the retaining wall is part of the house. Mistake number four when building on a slope is logistics. How we will access the site, how we will arrange all our essentials on the site, the toilet, the dumpster, the storage of materials. This includes where the equipment will be placed, how the concrete mixer will enter, and how the concrete will be delivered here. All these details, if not thought through, or if treated carelessly and not planned in advance, will cost you extra money. For example, here we have already removed about 50 truckloads of soil. We are removing this soil in order to reach the required level. But some of the soil can be used for backfilling in places where, for example, special backfill is not required. Here we have retaining walls for the septic tank and special backfill is not required there because there is a liner. It protects this wall and we can use the fine soil we removed to fill it back in. But the problem is that we don't have space here to store this soil, so we have to haul it away. And when we're ready to backfill, we'll have to buy truckloads of soil again to bring it back. Of course, we've prepared a few spots where we've stored about 20 or 30 truckloads, so we won't need to buy more for those. But on a lot like this, on a slope, usually there aren't any flat spots, no level areas where you can just store soil. You can always find a solution, but you need to think about it in advance. If you don't think about it ahead of time, that mistake could cost you 20, 30, or even $50,000. It depends on what kind of project you're building. Each truck costs six or $700, and you'll be paying to haul the soil away. For example, 10 trucks is already $6,000, and then to bring it back. So even when buying a plot and designing a project for a specific site, immediately think about how logistics and storage will be handled on a slope. By the way, guys, while we were on our way to talk about the next mistake, my partner Dimitri just fell. It looks funny, but in reality, it's not funny at all. And safety precautions on a construction site, especially on a slope, are particularly important. Mistake number five is backfilling. When the wrong type of soil is chosen for backfilling or drainage, which we've already discussed, isn't installed, or the connection between the backfill and the wall is done incorrectly. That is, there should be granules, granules wrapped in fabric. The backfill is not compacted. All of this will eventually lead to huge losses. The losses could be anywhere from 50 to $70,000. Why? If this soil starts to settle over time and you end up with voids under the slab, or if water starts seeping under the retaining wall and the soil subsides, then water will definitely find a place to get into the house. Fixing such a mistake after the renovation is done, the drywall is installed and the landscaping is finished is very expensive and very difficult. You have to remove everything and replace the backfill again. So it might sound easy. Backfill. On a flat area, it's just reverse slopes. You fill it in, plant grass or cover it with gravel. Everything is great, but on a slope, backfill is extremely important. What material you use, how well it's compacted, how well you did the job, how many rains have passed, all of this matters. By the way, I have a case. As soon as it starts raining, I immediately run to the construction site. Why do I run to the construction site when it rains? Because during the rain, after we've done the backfill, but before the project is finished, I can see where we have problems and we can fix those issues as construction progresses. Rain is your helper, not your enemy. During construction, it helps you identify mistakes at the building stage. Mistake number six is the septic system. This problem actually starts when you buy the lot. You need to determine whether it's even possible to install a septic system there at all. There are lots where it's simply impossible to do this. And when you meet with your engineer, your septic engineer, discuss with them what kind of system can be installed there. Is it a chamber system or a drip field, meaning when a field is installed? Because a house can't function without a septic system. In other words, it simply can't exist. A septic system is absolutely necessary. Of course, unless you have access to city sewage. But if you need to install a septic system, discuss with the engineer what type of soil you have, what kind of system is suitable, and how to place the septic tank on a slope. Because if you only have a slope and no flat areas, it's quite difficult to do. You'll need to build a special place for the septic tank. It could cost you literally hundreds of thousands of dollars if you don't have a flat spot. And the only way to get the tank there is by helicopter. And of course, the most expensive, the seventh mistake, is retaining walls. They will be present in any project when building on a slope. 
and the cost of these walls can range from $100,000 to $200,000 or even more. It all depends on what kind of project you're building, where it's located, what kind of slope you have, the size of the lot, and whether you need retaining walls for the septic field. Or if these are just retaining walls, for example, to hold back the soil. Or if it's a wall that connects the first and second floors. Everything will depend on the project. And when you are designing your house and working with an architect, always remember, if there is a suggestion to build a retaining wall that immediately translates into hundreds of thousands of dollars. For example, here we have 300 linear feet of retaining wall, which was built to properly install the septic system. And the cost of this wall reaches $40,000. So why build on a slope if we have so many problems? The first, and I think the last reason, is of course this stunning view. Lots on a slope give you the opportunity to position your home with a stunning view, make your home private, and make it unique. If you are planning to build on a slope or are already building and need our help, follow the link and we'll see you at your site.